might be surprised to learn that this home belongs to an interior designer. In fact, Jason Chong is a trained architect and his creative eye extends to pot plants. I've come to see how Jason integrates them into the design of his own home, especially indoors, and how he keeps them in tip-top condition. I've always loved indoor plants from when I was young. Um, it's always been a passion and I've always loved how they soften spaces. Um, especially being an architect, I love how it can change a room and bring the inside out, because I think that we really respond well to plants. Jason's single-fronted cottage is in the Melbourne inner city suburb of Abbotsford. The first indoor plant I spot is a bit of a surprise. And there's something I've never noticed before, an Abyssinian yeah. banana yeah. in the bedroom. In the bedroom. And I was told so many times it wouldn't work. Is that right? Um, and that just makes me want to grow it even more. You like yeah. a challenge, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, a challenge, it? and yeah. it's doing really well. In the main living area, the plants look terrific. Oh my goodness, how many have you got in here? Um, the last head count was 300, but I think it's grown from there. Um, there's more in the back room. <laughs> you just well. sneak little things sneak in. Sneak little every... things in and now, experiments, I call them. You've really thought about the design, the placement of the indoor plants. How have you done that? Um, we've done it through layering the tall plants towards the back in the corner smaller plants down below with different foliage. Which is yeah. what you do in outdoor gardening outdoor too, isn't yeah. it? A mixture of texture and foliage, which you would normally do in design. Mm. Whether it's landscape or interiors, it's a similar philosophy um, of layering and filling spaces as well. I like yeah. the collection that you've got though. That one intrigues me. Yeah, the strobel anthers. Mm. Um, it has beautiful texture as well and that colour is amazing, the purple. And, and this one next door to it, the oh, variegation. This is a Picasso peace lily, similar to the other type of peace lily, but with beautiful variegation, which is mm. unusual. And then this one, that's been around for ages. Yes, so that's a watermelon peperomia, mm -hmm. and it was around prolifically years ago. Um, for a long time, people stopped collecting them, and I think they're starting to come back. Somehow, we managed to fit into the back room of the house. Wow, this really is the smallest room in your house. What's it for? Um, well, it's actually become the green room to experiment with outdoor plants inside, growing things that shouldn't really grow in Melbourne. Ah. Um, plants like the Braniopsis, yes. uh, which I'll show you a photo, yeah. which was flushing not long ago, um, and it has these beautiful coloured wow. leaves when it first comes out. That's unreal. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that, so that shouldn't normally happen in no, Victoria. No, it shouldn't normally happen in wow. Victoria but indoors, we mm. think it can work. This is amazing. And that's a caladium, so that yes. beautiful red foliage. Yes. And we've also got a palaea here, which is different to the other types. Things like this leopard plant here. That looks like is... a spotty dog to me. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly. Wonderful, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's great. And over here, we've got some dark begonias grown for their foliage rather than their flowers. That's um, beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, and really you don't really black. get that dark colour. Mm. And then we've got another one up there. Or we kind of capture the essence of a greenhouse through cloches like this to accelerate the growing. Jason's backyard also tells me that he's a real plant lover. That's an amazing collection in your glass house. Why do you grow so many indoor plants? Um, well, it's a real passion of mine to really preserve some of the rarer species for the future generations to enjoy. Um, things like this philodendron mammae, which you don't often see anymore. Because they're really special, aren't they? Yeah, they're really special and they there's so much texture out there that people don't know about. Yes, yes. And, and with your indoor plants, what's some good tips to go with? One of my big tips is don't buy all your plants at once. Start with a few um, and make sure you understand them and know what you need to build up that collection. Yeah, I guess the fun is in the chase, isn't it? The more you hunt, the more interesting mm. plants you go to find. What about fussy things like maidenhair ferns? One of my big tips for maidenhairs is to keep them in around five mil of water um, so they get the humidity and it actually keeps them moist during the crazy weather in Melbourne. What else? I find that people overwater mm. and they don't look out for the signs of yellowing leaves, brown leaves um, and dropping leaves mm. um, and it's always important to ease off on the watering. The fiddle leaf fig is an example of people overwatering and killing it with kindness. They only really like watering once every three weeks and then just a cup. They're very tough, really, aren't they? Yeah. Mm. In any house, dust is a real problem. Dust is a huge problem when it mm. comes to indoor plants. Mm. Um, some people like to wipe the leaves down with a damp cloth. I personally like to take them into the bathroom and shower off the dust from the leaves. And, and what, with a nozzle and just very quickly? Yeah, with just a handheld nozzle, yeah. um, and it just washes off all the dust. 
Oh, and thank you for all those tips. No worries, it's been great. <laughs>